In this video, I'm going to take you through what we need to do to calculate a basic U value. I'm going to look at a question here from 1998, quite a while back here now, but this contains all the details that we'll be referring to as we go through this question. So the U value, first of all, in a U value, you always set out by drawing a U value table. That's the first thing that you'll do. And it won't change from any of these. So the first thing you'll put down is the component, whatever that element that's listed in the, uh, the question. The conductivity, which is also referred to as a K value. The resistivity, it's just referred to as an R value, or one over K. And then you have your thickness of material, which is measured in meters, which I'll be speaking about in a little while. And the last thing that you'll have is your resistance, and that's referred to as a big R. You can see that resistivity is a small R, and the resistance is a big R. You won't always be given the conductivity, or you mightn't be given the resistivity to one or, or one or the other. But these headings will always be the same. So I'm going to just have a go at putting these in here now. I'm going to draw lines to show my table and allow for the spaces for each of those. So you could see in the question that we have here, I actually have resistivities and conductivities, and that's the reason I picked this question as well too, and it's only a straightforward U value. So we'll take a look at what we have to start. So the first thing I like to do is when we're looking at a component like this, if there's resistances in it, I'll pick out the three resistances that we have here. You can see from the question we have external surface resistance, internal surface resistance, and we have a cavity resistance. And the reason why I'm putting these in first is because there's no calculation with these at all, but they have to be included. So the figures that we have for each of these from the question, we just enter them right over in the the resistance column over here on the right hand side. So each of these are just transferred from the information that you're given for the resistance for the external. I enter it here, internal. I'll be entering the value that you'll see here and just to show that we have it here. 0 0.053 we have for the external and then internal is 0 0.123. Then the cavity resistance we have here is 0 0.176 and I add that in. Now for the other elements that we have here we need to enter them and they would have been highlighted from here before. So we we'll start off by putting in the facing brick. I have lightweight concrete block, so just LW concrete block. I have plaster, or the plasterboard, and I have polystyrene, which is the insulation. So just looking at the table here now, we have three values entered into this. They are all the elements, or the components that we have, and we need to do the calculations here. So we take a look at what information we're given, whether well, there's a conductivity, or resistivity. So the facing brick, I can see it's resistivity. So the value is 0 0.714. So I just enter that under the appropriate column, which is the resistivity. Moving along then, I have my lightweight concrete. And it's a resistivity, and it's 4.545. And again, I go to where I have to place that in, in my column here under resistivity. 4.545. The plasterboard, I take a look to see what I have here is a conductivity or resistivity. It's re conductivity. So I go to the other column and I put in 0 0.016. Polystyrene is 0 0.033 and it's a conductivity value. So I place that in there. Now, after this here, I need to look at thicknesses of these materials in order to complete out the calculation and the, uh, the materials are measured in meters. So some people might find it useful just to move the decimal place uh, by three steps and some people like to do this here. What I'm going to show here is 1.000 is one meter. If I have 100 millimeters, it's 0.1. If I have 10 millimeters, it's 0 0.01. And then some people can get caught out when it comes down to the millimeters, because sometimes you may be given something like 12 and a half millimeters, and you have to go that extra 
decimal, that extra place and just be careful. If you need to draw that out, it's rough work for you and you can place them in. You see it's 100 millimeters of uh, facing brick, so that's 0 0.1. It's also 0 0.1 for the lightweight concrete block. And then the plasterboard is 0 0.0. 0127 so that's the thickness and 12.7 millimeters actually and the polystyrene then is 25 millimeters all got from the question now for to get our resistance on the right hand side here there's two ways that we can go about this to complete our calculation we must calculate it to get a resistance so you can see the thickness here we can take our thickness and we can multiply it by the resistivity. So if you have a resistivity, you multiply it by the thickness and it will get you your R value. Or what we can do is we can take our thickness, place it over the conductivity. So we're dividing it by the conductivity to give our, resist our resistance. So I'm just going to go through these here just to be certain on it. So I take my calculator. Now, it is simpler when it's multiplied by 0 0.1. We could just move it all one decimal place, but just to, for demonstration purposes, we'll multiply our 0 0.714, and you can see it's 0 0.0714. The decimal place just moves one when you're multiplying by 0.1. And the same thing as well, too, for 4.545. But the process, if it was a different thickness, that's what you will be doing. Then for our conductivity, when we have our conductivity value, what we're going to do is we'll take our thickness and enter it in and divide it by the conductivity value of 0 0.016 and that gives us our value of 0 0.7937. Then we'll do the same thing again here. We'll take our thickness, divide it by the conductivity, and we've got our value of 0 0.7575. Now, some people like to round things to three decimal places. It's not a big deal to add these up, and I'm uh, just going to tot these and see what our value comes out of. That's going to give us what's called our total resistance when we add each of these. So a straightforward process of adding each of these here and it gives me a value of 2.4291 and that is my total R. To get the U value then, what I have to do is I have to put one over the total R. Some people would like to call that a reciprocal. So once I put one over it, it just means that I divide the, num the figure one I divide it by the number that I have below the line. So if I take the figure 1, some people may have a reciprocal function on their calculator and that can be used as well. Just divide that and it gives me a value of 0 0.41167. And just to keep it to three decimal places, what I'm going to do is I'm going to round it. That's what I'm showing here. When I have that done, the value or the unit that I should put in here is watts per meter squared Kelvin. So it's always good to highlight your answer. So that's what I'm going to do here. And you may notice in the question, because it's going back a distance, it had centigrade in it. Kelvin and centigrade will not make any difference to your answer. So just where you see centigrade, you can ignore it uh, and put in Kelvin and the values for each of those are as per question as well. So that's basically how you go about calculating a simple U-value.